Hey everyone. I get a lot of questions on how I make my little notebooks and how to bind on my cinch machine. Um, so I figured that I would show a little, I guess, tutorial on how I um, do this. So with my supplies, I have, um, this is like a quarter size page. Um, these are my covers. They're blank because I'm going to decorate them later. And then this is my interior. So I have a little journal interior that's cut just a little bit underneath the margins for this cover. Um, so it's inset inside of the book. I have a piece of scrap stock my binding material. Um, so this is um, this is the cinch binding material. I don't remember what size, but it's like the smallest size. And uh, my cinch machine. I have a Heidi Swap. Um, that's just the one that I'm currently using. I have another one that has the round holes, but I figured, uh, you know, I already cut the, the holes in this one. I also have a corner rounder. That is how I got rounded corners on my cover. Um, I like to have nice rounded corners. I'm, they're pokey if not. This is uh, ooh, a creative memories. I cut um, 10 mil lamination with these, uh, this corner rounder. I'm not quite sure how long that's gonna last doing that, but um, it does work and uh, I love the round corners. So what I do for my covers and book to make sure that they're completely aligned with the binding because obviously the holes and the binding need to match up lined up here that is partly why i have the scrap stock in here so first how i determine binding is i measure how thick my book is and i have a you can't see it i have a mat i'm um, quilting mat here so i just put my binding and i measure how thick my binding is or how book how thick my book is and my book is actually three eighths thick uh with the cup even with the covers it's three eighths we're gonna say it's like a half an inch and the mink machine has three eighths and half inch. I'm actually gonna go with three eighths because that is the binding that I picked. So three eighths binding. And then I'm going to twirl it to the side where I can cut. Um, you can't really see. If you notice on the mink machine, uh, it has this ruler. And then the ruler also lines up to this crease right here in the machine. And that is how I line up my cuts, uh, the, the holes that I need to cut. And just to test this out, so my piece of scrap is as big as my cover. And I want to make sure to test my cut before I cut my, my cover. Um, because if not, I have to cut another cover. So here is my book. I'm going to use my pen here. I'm going to mark the top and the bottom of where my book lands. On my scrap piece of paper. And so if I line this scrap piece of paper up where my mark is with this bottom crease in the machine, it should give me the binding that I want. You can use the ruler, but the ruler does, it starts at one, but it's got like a little bit of an eighth of an inch um give in there and i'm imagining it's because when you push up your ruler it matches up to the machine but this is much more precise for me so i line it up with the machine that's it Okay. 
make sure my all my holes are where I want them to be. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine holes. So nine punches, and then I pull out the 10, 11, and 12 because I don't want to over punch on my cover. So here is what my line, oh, there's where my lines look and where my hole punches are. So if I line this up, my hole punches and my book should line up just correctly with the top and bottom margins. See how that works? There's the top hole, there's the bottom hole and then they line up. So now I know that my mink machine, now I keep saying my mink machine because I have a Heidi Swap mink machine. My cinch machine is in the correct place for my covers. So I'm going to slide my covers in. And then I'm going to punch. I was just making sure that they were lined up. So I punch my covers. And now I have perfectly centered covers for my book. And you can see, you can't really see, but if I slip this in to test it, Went in there nicely. I will slip it in there to test it. You can see how it's all, it's lined up centered. Centered, centered. Okay. Successful. Okay. Now to cinch my book together, I'm going to place my binding, the claws, into the machine and place my book in. So I place my book in face first. Um, I have put place the whole book in face first. And then my front cover goes on next. And then my back cover goes on last. So what happens is when you cinch this closed and you flip it open to where it's supposed to look, the covers will be in the correct spot. So now we are sandwiched together. We're at the 3 8 inch mark. And I'm going to move this down so you can see it better. When you place your book inside of the mink or inside of the cinch machine, you want the coils to touch all the way to the back of the machine. And I rest my coils right inside. I try to balance them in here. And then I'm going to slowly, slowly cinch this down. There we go. Perfectly cinched. And then I'm going to flip it open. There is my book. Here is my back cover. You can see how it's nicely pushed together. I have a nice round binding. I know it's hard, it's hard to see that, but I often get, sometimes I get binding that's like all wonky and then I'll just go in and I'll just like gently push it together to kind of even it out. 
but it looks pretty good. So that is how I bind a notebook journal with my cinch machine. Note, I am not getting paid for any of this. I am not being sponsored or affiliated with Heidi Swap. We are memory keepers, uh, creative memories, the cinch machine, any of these people. I just like to use their products. Um, so let me know if that was helpful with my little scrap piece of paper. That is how I line up my covers and have a nice little overhang. See, there's a nice overhang for my pages. Thanks for watching.